Hi, hi, guess what? It's me, Katie Kmelo. I'm your mystery reader. And I'm really, really excited to do this. Really excited to connect with you in this way and to talk with you now when I feel like things are really, really hard. And when, when I am looking for something that will make me feel better, what I instinctually turn to is words. And I love poetry. So I don't know if y'all have been reading poetry a lot recently, but poetry is something that always cheers me up. So I thought that we would read some poems together. Um, and just as a heads up for you, Ramona, the dog is here too, and she might pop in at any minute as I read, um, but you'll be able to hear her jingling down here at my feet. Okay, let's start with some poems. I'm gonna read to you from Firefly July. Uh, these are poems selected by Paul Genesco and illustrated by Melissa Sweet. Um, and the first one is a poem called Tall City, I'm going to show you the illustrations that go with it, but I want to tell you who wrote it first. Her name is Susan Nicholas Pulsifer, and the poem is called Tall City. Can you see the illustration? Here, houses rise so straight and tall that I'm not surprised at all to see them simply walk away into the clouds this misty day. Why I love that one is because it makes you look at buildings and see something else entirely. It's like, that's it. And this is to me the, the miracle of poetry and of looking at things is you can see them, the buildings are gonna look because of the mist, like they're gonna walk away. And this is like a gift of poetry is to see something familiar in a new way. And it's part of why it can work to cheer you up. Um, the next poem I'm going to read is also, this is uh, selected by Paul uh, Genesco, and it's called The Proper Way to Meet a Hedgehog. And um, this poem that I'm going to read you is something that just because of the language and the rhythm, uh, and because it's got the word pancake in it, is really, really, really fun to read. Um, it's by Christina Rossetti. And it's called Mix a Pancake. Mix a pancake, stir a pancake, pop it in the pan, fry the pancake, toss the pancake, catch it if you can. And you can say that poem again and again, and every time it's more fun to say it. That was Ramona commenting on that. Okay, also, this is a favorite that has been around for a long, long time. Can you see the illustration? Robert Louis Stevenson, The Swing. How do you like to go up in a swing, up in the air so blue? Oh, I do think it is the pleasantest thing ever a child can do. Up in the air and over the wall till I can see so wide, rivers and trees and cattle and all over the countryside. Till I look down on the garden green, down on the roof so brown, up in the air I go flying again up in the air and down. That poem to me is what any book or any poem can do. It can take you into another world just by paying attention and looking. So the higher you go, the more you can see, the more you read, the more you can see. Um, I, so we've read books about cities, I mean, read poems about cities, and also ones about pancakes and about swinging. And I thought that you might like to hear a poem that somebody wrote about a pig. Um, the pig is Mercy Watson. Maybe you've heard of Mercy Watson. She lives on Dekawu Drive. This book is um, more tales from Dekawu Drive. It's Stella Endicott in the Anything is Possible poem. And in this book, Stella Endicott writes a poem um, and a lot of things happen because of that poem, but I'm going to read you the poem and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about the book. This is the poem that Stella wrote. It is good to sit on a couch next to a pig and listen to a wizard play a sad song on the accordion. Outside, leaves are ballerinas dancing to the ground. I wonder 
what will happen next. Maybe someone will call me home. So Stella writes that poem and um, because of that poem, she ends up in the principal's office because she gets into an argument uh, with a boy named Horace Broom who insists that pigs do not sit on couches, but we all know that Mercy Watson sits on the couch a lot. So reading a poem can cheer you up. Reading a poem aloud to somebody else can cheer you up because it has cheered me up to read these to you today. But the other thing that I wanna remind you of is you can write a poem. Uh, you can write a poem about anything, pigs, pancakes, buildings, swinging, dogs. I mean, this is the beautiful thing about words. You can use them to help you see the world and help you see each other and also to lift your spirits, which is what I hope has happened today, that um, me popping in and saying hello and that I'm thinking of all of you and uh that that has cheered you up and that hearing some words has cheered you up too. Thank you for listening to me. And uh, Ramona says, thank you too. She didn't do as good a job at listening. Okay, bye. Um, excuse me, no, nobody asked me if I had a poem and I do. It goes like this. <clears throat> I'm named after Ramona, Ramona the Pest but I prefer to be called Ramona the Best. <laughs>